Both Asana and Microsoft Teams have excellent collaboration capabilities. Which one would you choose for the project management? In this tutorial, we will start by building an Asana project plan, and then we will try to build the same project plan using Microsoft Teams, so you can compare for yourself. Let's go ahead and get started. And now, let's take a look on how to create an effective e-commerce project plan in Asana. One of the best ways to organize project in Asana is typically by creating a project milestones and then putting tasks under each milestone. For example, in this project, there are seven milestones. Project initiation, proof of concept, design, build, test for quality assurance, launch of the website, as well as ongoing support and enhancements. Different activities typically performed in the different phases of the project. For example, as part of initiation phase, you typically research the platform, which might be out of the box solution you're trying to implement. And you also make sure that you secure the funding to run the entire project. A lot of times during initiation, you also need to decide what kind of skills would be needed to successfully implement this project. And where would you find the right team members to help you implement this project? During the proof of concept phase, you do a small scale implementation. For example, if you would build e-commerce store, you will try to go live with the small store, maybe selling instead of 100 products, just 10 products, or maybe selling the full scale of products, but presenting it to the smaller list of customers. For example, I'm in the WordPress right now and I have access to the WooCommerce plugin. If we click on the WooCommerce, you see that there are a lot of steps associated with the store setup. And in fact, finishing the store setup might be a proof of concept. To set up successful store, you need to define store details, add products, set up payment methods, set up taxes, and personalize your store. A lot of times, capabilities of the particular plugin, like WooCommerce, would define the tasks of what you need to do for the particular store. Once you're done with the proof of concept, the next step is to do the design. During the design phase, you define how people are going to be using your store, and you build use cases. Then you're designing it, actually by doing UI and UX, understanding how data is going to flow, and defining the technical architecture. During the build phase, you either customize the site or enhance and configure the technology that you selected as a plugin for your e-commerce store. For example, when setting up WooCommerce engine on WordPress, you need to consider what type of products are you going to be selling. There is a whole category of products in the WooCommerce, and you need to define categories, tags, and attributes for each product. For example, if we click Add New Product, you see the list of certain fields that need to be populated to define the product. It could be digital product, or it could be physical product. And if we jump into the product data, we see that you need to define regular price, sale price, tax status. If it's a physical product, you also need to consider inventory. If you need to ship this product, you also need to define the dimension. You also can define linked product to help customers better meet their needs as well as promote cross-selling. And there are a lot of other fields like attributes, advanced, or if it's a digital product, maybe you have something related to the ebook store. Quality assurance for e-commerce store basically means that you need to test your store as a user. You need to come in, find what you're looking for, order this product, receive an email, and on the back end, you need to make sure that shipping works and you have a process for returns. Launching of the e-commerce store is typically a very exciting event but you need to make sure that a lot of things got done before the launch date. You need to understand what is your marketing strategy, what kind of promotions are you going to do, how customers are going to discover your store among a lot of other stores, what kind of ads you might be running, and a lot of other things. And last but not least is a very important step. You need to define how you're going to do the maintenance of the website. You would need a team of professionals that will be fulfilling the orders, and doing the shipments for the physical products if necessary. And you also need to decide if you're going to do ongoing improvements and who is going to be your team for that. If you went through the process of defining what you're going to be doing through this main seven phases of the project, now you have the easy task. All you need to do is to understand what are you going to be doing as part of every phase. And once you understand that, you need to add task into Asana. When you create new project plan in Asana, it comes with some pre-built milestones as well as pre-built tasks. So tasks two and three are two of those pre-built tasks 
and I already renamed the task one in together requirements. We can add a new task by clicking add task button. And I'm going to write the name of the task here. My task is to complete research of WooCommerce plugin that is installed on the WordPress to better understand what exactly needs to be done to configure successful e-commerce store. Let me go into task details to better understand what exactly needs to be done. Here on this screen, I need to assign task to somebody. In this configuration, I only have myself, but in the typical project, you have multiple team members and you would need to define who is actually going to be doing this work. And that should be based on qualifications and experiences. You also need to define the due date. You select the calendar and define by which date this task would need to be completed. I am going to select August 17th. In the next section, you need to add dependencies. Is this task dependent upon other tasks? And you see multiple tasks in this project, as well as in other projects that I'm running here in the system that you can choose from. I'm not going to select anything, but in a real project, there might be dependency. In the priority field, you need to define what's the importance of this task. To me, it sounds like a high importance because we can't move forward without completing it. And in the status field, I am going to say on track, but you have two other choices at risk or off track, and you can add your own choices by using the edit button. In description field, you typically define what's the essence of this task and provide additional details. The essence of this task is to identify required settings for WooCommerce plugin that need to be configured to make WooCommerce operational on the WordPress platform. Now, as we have this task configured, we can close the details window and we can also delete task two and task three, or we can recycle them and put some other tasks instead of them. To delete the task, you hover the cursor on top of the task, do a right mouse click on your mouse and select delete the task. And the cool thing about Asana is that it allows you to undo if you deleted the task by mistake. Microsoft Teams wasn't designed as project management tool. To create a simple project plan in Microsoft Teams, we will use Microsoft Excel. Let's go ahead and I'll show you how to build a simple project plan in Microsoft Teams. One of the easiest ways to manage projects inside Microsoft Teams is by creating built-in Microsoft Excel files. For example, in the e-commerce project channel where I track e-commerce project execution, I can navigate to the files section and then select new Microsoft Excel workbook. I will call this workbook simple project plan because it's designed the best to track small projects and I'm going to click create button. Once inside Excel document, I am going to capture project name, project start date and project end date. Once I captured all of this information for my e-commerce project, which starts on July 30th of 2021 and ends on November 30th of 2021, I can format the cells and I do it by selecting the cells and selecting the formatting style that I want, which would be all borders in my case. There are going to be multiple columns in my project plan. One column will capture the phase of the project. The next column B, I will use to capture the task information. Due by information and notes information will be captured in the columns C and D. Once I highlight all these cells and then select the bold, as well as change the color, I will end up with the meaningful heading for my project plan and can actually start focusing on the actual tasks that I need to capture. Let's look at the key phases of the project plan you might consider having in your project. The first one is project initiation. During this phase, you decide what exactly do you want to accomplish, what would be the scope, and how you're going to do it. Typically deciding to present the concept to decision makers and get funding for the project. It's a good idea to do proof of concept. And the main question you're trying to answer as part of the proof of concept is whether your idea is viable. Because in the end, your project is nothing but implementation of the idea. An idea might be a good idea or it might be a bad idea. And it's always good to verify what it actually is, especially before you start investing a lot of money into your idea. Typically, during the proof of concept, you're trying to prove if the idea is viable. And then you make a go-no-go no go decision. You did your best as part of proof of concept to see if it works. And then you decide, do you really want to move forward and invest funds into building something that is still risky, but you already proved that it might work? If you decide to go forward, 
Then you go through design phase, build and test phase, launch phase, and then ongoing support and enhancements phase for the project. To have a solid start on your project plan, all you need to do is to move this concept, these phases, into your project plan, and then start adding tasks related to each phase. One thing to keep in mind is that because this particular project plan concept is designed for the small projects, there's no owner here because I am the only one who will be doing the tasks, or it might be you. But if you have a larger team of multiple people, it might be a good idea to add another column which captures the owner. So what exactly do you need to do as part of project initiation? As an example of the tasks, I have a couple tasks here of what you might consider doing during the initiation phase of the project. For example, you might design the product offerings list. What exactly are you going to be selling? How are you going to be selling? How are you going to be delivering these products to the customers? You also might need to select a store technology. What would it be? Do you have an existing technology preference or are you starting from scratch and selecting something that might be the best choice on the market? Do you need to understand technical capabilities of the particular technology to understand which features are provided and which features may need to be built based on your needs of what are you trying to sell? How are you going to design your site? What kind of branding would you like to embed and implement it? What kind of infrastructure would you need to successfully run your store? And what kind of integrations you might need to do? You might also have a lot of other tasks based on your specifics. Once you're done entering the tasks, you can expand the category and the phase of project initiation across all the tasks that you've entered. Once you have entered the tasks, you can also assign the due date. The due date might be different for each individual task. And you might want to give yourself some time to make a big decisions. For example, how would you select store technology? You might want to consider doing a lot of research before you finalizing something and selecting something as your final choice. Some of the tasks could also run in parallel. For example, you can select store technology and then do design and branding and also understand your integrations in parallel. So you can assign different people if you're running this project for multiple people. Once you're done entering tasks for initiation phase, you can also brainstorm of what would you need to do as part of proof of concept phase, go no go decision phase, design phase, build and test phase, launch and support phases as well. Once you finalize the list, you can enter all of these tasks into the tasks column and then keep track of these tasks and assign due dates based on the initial dates of your project plan. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this video was helpful and helped you to solve your challenge. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this and we will make sure to deliver it to you in the future. Also, please make sure to check out our free and premium resources on the website. All you need to do is to go to the menu section and select appropriate options. In addition, Make sure you don't forget to look at the downloads in the description section of this video. I also recommend that you follow online training for everyone. We are constantly delivering new content to help you solve different problems and challenges. And I also have a favor to ask. If you know someone who would benefit from this content, please make sure to share this video with your friends or colleagues to help them solve their challenges. Make sure to leave your questions or suggestions in the comment section of this video. And all the best on your journey. Thanks for watching.